New this noon, police trying to track down a pair of stolen trucks. Katrina Weber details the weekend heist at a business that has officers investigating. And a fire near two homes nearly makes for a disastrous morning. What we know about the situation this noon. And it is officially tax season, and this year filing could be a bit more complicated for some people. Max Massey has tips for those trying to get a jump on all that paperwork. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. We begin with San Antonio police detectives say it looks like a professional job. The theft of vehicles, tools, and possibly other items from an oil industry business. They say someone broke into the business near Interstate 10 and Greytown Road this weekend and made off with four company trucks and a van. Katrina Weber was there as police recovered some of those vehicles thanks to GPS technology. While they may blend in with the scenery, two white pickups parked at this La Quinta Inn actually are very much out of place. Thanks to GPS trackers, San Antonio police located them in this parking lot at Interstate 35 and Ritterman Road around 7 this morning. They belong to Calfrac Well Services, a company about 15 miles away. Workers noticed this morning that the business near I-10 and Greytown Road had been hit by burglars this weekend. Police say the crooks cut power to the property, then made off with five vehicles, tools, and possibly other items. Police are not sure exactly how long these trucks have been parked here, but it's possible they could get some clues from the surveillance cameras here at this motel. After searching the motel property, police also found a company van and arrested a man wearing a Calfrac uniform, but who was not an employee. The two trucks, meanwhile, were quickly brought back where they belong. Police say they're still looking for two others, but the list of stolen items could grow as workers continue taking inventory. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam. Hey, some people got a little bit of rain today, at least a little. Ooh, look how cloudy it looks too, Justin. Yeah, we, we got some, but not near as enough. You look at live cam there, we still got some low hanging clouds. It's just kind of misty and not all that nice out there. We do think some sun will reappear later this afternoon, but we've got several more hours of this cloud cover before that happens. Let's first start with the radar. We'll show you where the rain is now. We had some showers here in San Antonio earlier. Guess what? It amounted to about a trace at the airport. That's it. Uh, that rain is now moving towards Victoria, Cuero at this hour, Gonzalez. Uh, the showers have really moved out for you as well. We look at San Antonio. There's not much there. It's not to say we couldn't still see a little bit of drizzle around here. We've seen that. Uh, it's just going to be the light stuff uh, off to the east. Quero, Howitzville, Victoria. That's where some of the better rain is. And those rainfall totals still only about a tenth of an inch at best as this rain continues to move east and out of our area. Here's a look at the satellite picture. And you see the cloud cover of San Antonio still there, but uh, back to the West Valley, starting to see some sun. Rock Springs, you're seeing sun, and that's going to help to boost the temperatures. 53 in Uvalde, up to 58 now in Del Rio, a place that has seen sun for quite a while now. Underneath the clouds, those temperatures are going to be cooler today. 49 Kennedy, 50 in Gonzales. We've been stuck at 50 for several hours now. Pollen count, this is great news. Molds are low, mountain cedar down to 20. We're getting towards the end of the season. Let's hope that's a good sign. Forecast for today, again, we should see some sun, but it'll take until later this afternoon. 56, the forecast high. West Julia winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We've got a few fronts in the forecast, maybe another small chance for rain. We'll talk about it coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. New at noon, a fire inside a shed nearly spreads to two homes on the city's northwest side, and thankfully, crews say it was just heat and not flames that hit those houses. This happened earlier today in the 200 block of Micklejohn Street. That's near Calabar Road and I-10. Firefighters say the flames started at a shed that's near a home, but not attached to it. According to crews, heat from that fire radiated to two homes, which have minor damage. No one was hurt. The shed was destroyed, though. So far, no word on what caused the flames to spark. 100 drivers involved in street racing overnight. That's according to police. We're told this happened on the East Road of South Cross and South WW White around 1030 last night. Police say a couple of vehicles were towed away and they gave out some citations. Officers have not arrested anyone. However, they are still investigating. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. Though some hospitals continue feeling the strain from the Omicron variant, there is some encouraging news. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying the surge could be nearing its peak. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. 
In a sign of hope, Dr. Anthony Fauci saying some parts of the country may have seen the worst of this Omicron surge. Things are looking good. We don't want to get overconfident but they all look like they're going in the right direction right now. Nationwide, new cases dropping 10% in the last week, but parts of the Midwest and the West still getting hit hard. And experts warn that areas with lower vaccination rates may peak later. There may be a bit more pain and suffering with hospitalizations in those areas of the country that have not been fully vaccinated or have not gotten boosters. Health officials stressing vaccines and booster shots are the best defense against severe infection from Omicron. But 86 million eligible Americans are unvaccinated. In Washington, D.C. Sunday, thousands protesting vaccine mandates. In Arkansas, hospital admissions have gone up 30% in the last week. Four members of the Smith family testing positive, including 19-month-old Vinny, who got very sick from the virus. His family struggled to find an open bed at the local hospital. There didn't seem to be enough people to help all everyone that needed it. And that was ABC's Rena Roy reporting. The COVID-19 vaccine could eventually become a yearly shot. At least that's what Pfizer CEO is hoping. In an interview with an Israeli news outlet, he says he wants people to get a yearly COVID-19 vaccine like the flu instead of having to get a booster every several months. He said it would be easier to convince people to get vaccinated that way. Right now, Pfizer is looking to create a vaccine that offers even more protection against Omicron and some of the other variants. It is that time of year again. Today, the IRS will begin accepting tax returns and it is about two and a half weeks earlier than last year with the numerous stimulus checks and child tax credits. Max Mass explains the key factors you need to be aware of and what the IRS commissioner is now urging. Well, first and foremost, you need to account for the stimulus checks or any child tax credit checks that you got over the last year. Now, you should be getting a letter from the IRS if you haven't gotten it already. And just in case you don't or you forgot how much money you got from the government, you can check IRS.gov. The IRS is warning that a resurgence of COVID infections on top of less funding authorization from Congress well, that could make this filing season particularly challenging. The IRS commissioner saying the pandemic continues to create challenges, but the IRS reminds people there are important steps that they can take to help ensure their tax return and refund don't face processing delays. So here's the thing. Avoiding a paper tax return will be more important than ever this year to avert those processing delays. The commissioner is urging taxpayers to file their returns electronically and opt in to get their refunds by direct deposit. If you have any questions, the IRS is encouraging people to use the online resources before you try to call. Last filing season, as a result of COVID, the tax changes, and broader pandemic challenges, the IRS phone services, they received more than 145 million calls. In terms of refunds, last year's average tax refund was more than $2,800. And this year, more than 160 million individual tax returns are expected to be filed. The IRS says most taxpayers will receive their refund. You can receive your refund within 21 days of when you file. That is if you file electronically and if you choose direct deposit and there is no issue with the tax return. We know this can be a complicated process, but most of the forms you need are on irs.gov slash forms. Now remember the deadline this year, April 18th, three days later than normal. But if you really need extra time, you can file for an extension that should give you until October. Guys, back to you. Still coming up this half hour of KSL 12 News at noon. The Spurs back at full strength, but still not strong enough to pull off a win against the Sixers. Highlights coming up. The pre-K for SA enrollment season about to begin, and some parents have questions when it comes to safety amid the pandemic. After the break, Tiffany Huertas with some answers from school officials. A new episode of KSAT Explains is out tomorrow night, and this week's episode is all about esports, what they are, and why you should care, even if you aren't a gamer. For part of this episode, it, the Explains team talked to a few local schools about their esports programs, including Jefferson High School. Jefferson's math and computer science teacher started the program a few years ago with some encouragement from students. It was a process that started with the students, and they came to me and they're like, Mr. Hernandez, we've heard that you like video games. And I'm like, I love video games. 
and they said, would you like to be our esports sponsor? Mr. Hernandez has opened a really, really cool floor for some of our students that, you know, a lot of kids just don't, don't get the opportunity to kind of be a part of. Or that sense of like, team, you know. Of course, it's not just local high schools. Several local colleges also now offer students a chance to play esports with programs of their own. And you'll hear from some of them during the week's show. Stream KSAT explains esports in San Antonio tomorrow at 7 on KSAT.com and KSAT's Facebook page. There are a variety of school choice options available for children in Texas. And during this year's Texas School Choice Week, we are taking a closer look at Pre-K for SA, the city-funded public pre-game pre-K program. Pre-K for SA is opening its pre-kindergarten enrollment for the 2022-23 school year next week. And the staff says to sign up as soon as possible because spots fill up fast. Tiffany Huertas explores how this program has changed students' lives in our community and what safety measures they are taking. Our longitudinal studies have shown that children who attend pre-K for SA have better reading, better math, and better attendance score in third grade and beyond. Pre-K for SA launched its first site in 2013, and since then, it's impacted thousands of local children. We follow the high scope curriculum, which is a play-based curriculum that helps children learn foundational academic skills, critical thinking, problem solving. Pre-K for SA says average enrollment is about 2,000 students a year, but due to the pandemic, that number dipped to about 1,500 this school year. Sarah Bure, CEO of Pre-K for SA, says they have different safety protocols in place and are getting COVID tested weekly. We retrofitted all of our buildings to have better air filtration, touchless um, water fountains and toilets and sinks and all of that. We have daily health screenings for both children and staff. Pre-kindergarten enrollment starts February 1st. Children must turn four years old by September 1st to attend. If um, the family qualifies based on one of the TEA indicators, they can attend free. And if they don't, we offer scholarships. We encourage everyone to apply as soon as they can, um, especially to make sure that they get their choice. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. And we have some breaking news for you just into the KSET 12 newsroom. Dr. Fernando Guerra, the former director of the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District, has died. That's according to the San Antonio Express News. Guerrero, a San Antonio native, was a pediatrician and he served as director from 1987 until 2010. Now taking a look live at uh, live cam. Oh, we're not looking at much, Justin. I mean, like you no. can only see half the screen. Uh, it, it, some fog is actually filtered in here. We've got some mist and drizzle. It's just kind of one of those days. We do think there will be some clearing later this afternoon, but for the next several hours, we'll have to contend with that kind of weather there. Forecasts are the aquifer, I should say, down three tenths per foot to 662.8. In your pollen count, everything's low as we showed you earlier. Mountain cedar and molds, good news there. Uh, we'll take a look at this forecast, talk about when that sun reappears. Coming up. So this morning, a little bit of rain turned out to be a very positive thing because not only did we get a little rain, but we also got a test of our windshield wipers to see if they're garbage and need to be replaced or if they're working very well. Are yours garbage, David? Actually, no, they weren't too bad. <laughs> Mine These either. Facts, Mine are fine. But, you know, a lot of us can figure that out now. Yeah. Cleaned off all that gunk on the windshield. Too. Yes. You know, the dust and the... It's been a while since we've got to use those. You're right about that. Uh, it, it was coming down for a while this morning. Not very heavy here in San Antonio. We're still seeing some of that drizzle now here in town and then some showers and We've had even a few thunderstorms well to our east. Let's look at the radar. And uh, I turned it up just a little bit so you can see some of the lighter returns here around San Antonio. And uh, it's coming down in the form of drizzle, as we mentioned. This is going to last a little while longer before pushing east. We've got some drier air off to the west that will eventually work its way in today. But in the meantime, pretty gray and somewhat damp out there. The roads. Even though we didn't get a ton of rain, they're a little slick, so keep that in mind. They are going to be wet in several spots as this little area of drizzle pushes through. And then further east, we mentioned there's actually some better rain. Victoria's actually picked up close to four tenths of an inch. That's one of the bigger tolls I've seen today. So they're getting more rain down there closer to the coast. But most of the showers actually pushing out of our eastern counties at this point, too. Still, uh, that drizzle will be a possibility for the next several hours. Uh, here's a look at some of the rainfall totals. 
at the airport does look like we actually did pick up a hundredth of an inch. Uh, Luling, about 0 0.2, 11 hundredths in Gonzales, uh, 15 hundredths in Seguin. Helps a little bit, but not much. The drought situation that we're in, we need more rain than this. And it really was San Antonio I-35 points east. Most of the folks out west did not pick up anything at all. So that's, uh, those are areas that desperately do need the rain. There's the scene outside. You can see kind of the drizzle coming down at this hour. 50 degrees at the airport. Cloud covers kept temperatures very steady. 53 stints and 50 at Kelly. 50 at Randolph. And we've got a westerly wind now at about 7 miles per hour. And again, that will start to draw in some of that drier air. Visibility did come down a little bit at the airport. That's mainly just that mist and drizzle that we're talking about. But places like New Braunfels down to about 2.5 miles visibility. Seguin, you go east, there's some fog, mist, and drizzle as well. Gonzales down to Beeville, so just a heads up there. And as we look at the satellite picture, that clearing line is just off to the west. Uvalde starting to move into Medina County. I do think it will shift into San Antonio a little bit later this afternoon. 51 in Kerrville, 48 with some clearing skies in Rock Springs. It's 58 now in Del Rio with sun there. And as we look at the future cast, that clearing line does move east by, say, 3 o'clock. And then by tonight, everybody clears out. But we get some fog redeveloping tomorrow morning. Could be fairly thick in spots. So the morning commute could be somewhat foggy to start on your Tuesday. High temperatures today. 56 here in San Antonio it will be significantly warmer out west, a little cooler off to the east where the clouds hold on most of the day. Places like Gonzales, maybe only around 50 degrees this afternoon. There's the big picture of this storm system quickly moving east now, a little dip here, and that is that low moving through uh, Texas and bringing rain as it does. As we look at the big picture here, there's some snow up across the Great Lakes, snow up across uh, parts of Montana. And there's some chilly weather up there. It's negative four in International Falls, eight in Minneapolis, 25 in Chicago. And we're going to get a couple cold fronts this week, but nothing that will draw in that really cold air. Temperatures stay actually pretty seasonal here. Seasonable, 65 degrees Tuesday. Uh, it's 54 on Wednesday with uh, mostly cloudy skies and more clouds on Thursday. 20% chance of rain Thursday into Friday, but it's a small chance, small window. And we get another front, but doesn't do a whole lot for our temperatures. 62 Saturday, 63, maybe a few more clouds on Sunday, guys. All right. Hopefully just a little bit on Thursday or Friday. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Two of the best NFL playoff games we've seen in a long time played yesterday. Highlights are coming up. And late game mistakes cost the Spurs a chance at a huge win yesterday. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. What a playoff Sunday. Rams beat the Bucks earlier this season, week three, looking for a repeat and a trip to the NFC Championship game, but they were taking on Tom Brady. Rams up 3-0. Matthew Stafford finds tight end Kendall Blanton for the seven-yard touchdown. He gets in 10-3 after one. Second quarter, third and 20. Stafford back to pass. A lot of time going deep. He's got his guy, Cooper Cup. In a lid on that cup, he's gone. 70 yards. They were up 23 at the half. Third quarter, it's Stafford again, cap it off a short drive, goes in for the one yard touchdown. LA is up 27 to 3. Then the comeback begins into the third. There's Leonard Fournette, scores from a yard out, 27 13. Fourth quarter, Brady going deep. Mike Evans gets behind the defense. Wow, 55 yard touchdown. Bucks are down seven. Rams get it back, but give it back. Cam Akers fumbles for the second time in the game thanks to Inamakansu. Bucks recover with just over two minutes to play. Fourth and one, and it's Fournette again. We're tied at 27, 42 seconds left on the clock. 27 seconds left. Stafford hits Cooper Cup again, all the way down inside the 20. It's a 44 yard pickup, and there's your. Game winner, 30-yard field goal. Rams take it 30-27. We'll have a new Super Bowl champ this year. Hats off to them. Really excited for our players. They did a great job, and, and that's why you play four quarters and, and try to finish that game out. But uh, that was something else. That was something else. You know, finding a way to win a football game is what it's all about. And uh, we got a group of guys in that locker room that all believe in each other. Um, you know, and I believe in those guys. So it was, it was a whole lot of fun. I know a lot of people wondering how you will contemplate whether you'll come back or not. I haven't put a lot of thought into it. So, you know, we'll just take it day by day and see, kind of see where we're at. All right. Well, we know where we're at next weekend. It's the 49ers and the Rams. 
SoFi Stadium kickoff is at 530. How about this? This is the first time in 12 years that a conference championship does not have Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady in the game. 12 years. All right, now let's take you to the game of the weekend. AFC Divisional Buffalo Bills at the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs looking for their fourth straight trip to the AFC Championship game. First quarter, Buffalo trying on fourth down. It's their second try on the drive. Devin Singletary scores. It's 7-0 Bills. Chiefs turn. Patrick Mahomes has protection. Hey, why not? Take it yourself. Scores from eight yards out. Tied at seven after one. Second quarter, under two to play. Mahomes, under pressure, finds Byron Pringle. In the end zone, 14-7 KC. Bill strike back. Josh Allen finds Gabriel Davis. There he is. Had to throw off his back foot. He's got it. Tied at 14 at half. Third quarter, Chiefs up three. McCole Hardman takes it 25 yards down the sideline. That's a touchdown. Extra point no good. It's 23-14. Under two to play. Allen to Davis again. There he is. Nice grab. Gone. 75 yards. They're down to 23-21. Late fourth, Chiefs up 26-21. Allen gets away and finds a wide open Davis. Their fourth, fourth down conversion. Bills go for two, get it, and they lead 29-26. Under two to play. Mahomes to Tyreek Hill, and there he goes. Speed kills. It did there. 64 yards to the end zone. KC back up 33-29. 13 seconds left. Bills march down the field, and Allen hits Davis for the fourth down. Touchdown connection again. That's the third lead change under two minutes. Bills up 36-33, and guess what? Three seconds left. Harris Butler makes a 49-yard field goal to force overtime. They left too much time for Patrick Mahomes in the OT. Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, touchdown. Eight yards. Chiefs win it 42-36 in OT. And we have that belief. We have the belief that we're going to do it. Um, if you take it back to the, the year we lost the AFC Championship game, we got in full range in like 18 seconds or something like that. You have to have that belief. If, if you're not going to go down fighting, um, then you don't deserve to be here. And uh, we, we knew that if we could just give ourselves a chance to, to, to get in Bucker's field goal range, uh, he was going to knock it in, and he did. It obviously, it, it hurts. You, know, you don't like feeling like this, especially back-to-back uh, -back years at the same place. Um, uh, yeah, so we, we got to find a way uh, to be better next year and, and to accomplish what we want to accomplish. All right, so here's your AFC championship matchup. It's the Bengals and the Chiefs Sunday at 2 o'clock Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Hey, it was another tough weekend for the San Antonio Spurs. There was a bright moment. The Spurs honored LaMarcus Aldridge and Patty Mills on their return to the Alamo City with the Brooklyn Nets. The Spurs hung in there with the Nets for three quarters. But then in the fourth quarter hit, and that was the end of that. DeJounte Murray had another triple-double. Patty Mills knocked down a couple of big buckets for him. But then again, James Harden also had a triple-double, and the Nets beat the Spurs 117-102, to outscored by 10 in the fourth quarter. And then last night, they ran into a hot Joel Embiid. Jakob Pertl led the way for the Spurs, 25 points, 10 rebounds, 4 blocks. Haven't seen those numbers since 2014. Embiid led the Sixers. He had 38 and 12. The Spurs made a couple of costly turnovers down the stretch. It cost them the game. They end up losing 115 to 109. All right, so here's the Spurs schedule for this week. They are at Houston tomorrow. Then they come back home for a couple against Memphis and Chicago. Memphis Wednesday, Chicago Friday. So that means they got back-to-back -back games away in Houston and home in Memphis at, against Memphis. And then uh, on Saturday, no, that's Monday, that's Sunday, right? Sunday, Phoenix. So they get Phoenix again. We just played Phoenix like a couple of days ago. I think we can steal it. Get them again. Steal it this time. We'll get it this time. All right, good news, free donuts. That's the offer Krispy Kreme has for you, what you need to do to get yours and how your efforts could help save lives. And the Supreme Court is adding another blockbuster case to a term already full of major issues. Now its decision could affect college admissions across the country. And are you on the hunt for a home? The housing market is still booming and while it's still a good time to sell, buying on the other hand, it hasn't gotten any easier. It is rough out there. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at how much homes have gone up over the last year and has tips on how to seal the deal before someone else does. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Now to the latest on the escalating crisis with Russia over Ukraine. President Biden considering a move to send U.S. troops to aid NATO allies as the administration orders some Americans to evacuate Ukraine. 
with Russian forces massed on the border. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. Today, intensity growing over Russian aggression towards Ukraine. Sources telling ABC News the White House now considering sending additional troops to Eastern European countries. Up to 5,000, according to the New York Times, along with warships and aircraft. And now the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine is ordering staff's families to evacuate and authorizing non-emergency personnel to depart. The State Department warning U.S. citizens in Ukraine should consider departing now using commercial or other privately available transportation options. The Ukrainian government criticized the decision as premature and excessively cautious. But the order comes as some fear a Russian invasion could happen at any moment, although Putin has denied this. ABC's oh, Ian Panel was on the front lines there just days ago. We just heard a gun shot. The British government has accused Russia of plotting to insert a pro-Russian politician as the leader of Ukraine. The U.S. calling the information deeply concerning. Today, the Kremlin says fears of a Russian invasion is hysteria created entirely by the U.S. and NATO. On CNN, Secretary of State Antony Blinken reaffirming the U.S.'s support for the Ukrainian government, saying the U.S. will not tolerate any incursion into Ukrainian territory. If a single additional Russian force goes into Ukraine uh, in an aggressive way, uh, as I said, that would trigger uh, a swift, a severe and a united response. That could include crippling economic sanctions and possibly restricting Russian access to semiconductors that enable computer and smartphone technology. Russia is saying it will respond to any increased troop deployment, although it hasn't said exactly what that response will be. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Opening statements are set to begin in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers involved in the 2020 death of George Floyd. Thomas Lane, Alex King, and Tutau are all accused of violating Floyd's civil rights. King and Lane are charged with failing to intervene in Derek Chauvin's unreasonable use of force. They restrained Floyd's legs while Chauvin pressed his knee into his back, and as Floyd yelled, he couldn't breathe. Tao held back bystanders who yelled at the officers to stop and check Floyd for a pulse after he lost consciousness. All three men are charged with failing to administer first aid, and they are pleading not guilty to the crimes. Lane King and Tao will also face Minnesota state charges in June. The nation's highest court taking on another major issue, affirmative action. Today, the Supreme Court agreed to hear a challenge to the consideration of race in college admissions. The court said it will take up lawsuits claiming that Harvard University, a private institution, and the University of North Carolina, a state school, discriminate against Asian American applicants. A decision against the schools could mean the end of affirmative action in college admissions. Arguments are expected to take place in the fall. So far, lower courts rejected the challenges, citing more than 40 years of high court rulings that allow colleges and universities to consider race and admissions decisions. Now to COVID and the Olympics. With less than two weeks to go, Beijing ramping up testing as dozens of cases have been recorded among Olympic personnel. Maggie Ruley is in London with more on that for us. Well, the ambitious Olympic bubbles already being put to the test. Organizers say they found 72 cases in the, just the first wave of about 2,500 people arriving in the capital over the past two weeks. A little more than half tested positive on arrival and the rest inside the bubble. And remember, when someone tests positive, they are immediately brought to a quarantine facility, either a hotel or a hospital. Now, these cases are on top of the 49 confirmed cases in Beijing and the more than 2,700 cases across the country. Now, the chair of the Olympic Medical expert panel said these numbers inside the bubble are what they expected. But the real questions now are around the sensitivity of these COVID tests China is using. Just within the last 24 hours, they've loosened the threshold of what it means to make a test positive, but it is still much tougher than what we're used to here in Europe and in America. Now, this means it is possible for athletes who have had COVID in the last few months and are testing negative stateside, they may test positive when they get to China. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, London. Taking a live look outside, even though it looks like it still may be rainy, is most of this cleared out, Justin? It, some of it, some okay. of it. So the heavier rain has cleared out. It's going to take a little while longer for some of this drizzle to move out and get some of this cloud cover out of here. So it's going to stay kind of dreary for the next couple of hours here. Uh, it's one of those days, it's a uh, Monday, kind of feels good maybe just to stay indoors if you don't have to go to work today. Uh, temperature wise, uh, we're at 50 degrees at the airport, 56 San Angelo, 50 in Waco. Pretty uniform temperatures across the state, nothing that jumps off the page there. 
And as we look at the big picture, it gives you a good idea of kind of what we're dealing with here as this storm system moves across the Lone Star State. You, know, you can kind of see the twist right there. That's the low and the back edge of it right there. Some drier air that's trying to move towards San Antonio, but it's doing so very slowly out ahead of it. Some good moisture. We missed out on really any good rain, but places like Houston, Far East Texas, they are going to get some pretty decent rain out of this as it pushes off to the east. A little closer look at that clearing line. It has made it to about Uvalde, but you can see it's not moving terribly fast here. It's still going to get through Medina County, Bandera before it makes it to San Antonio. So that's why I think we have at least a couple more hours of this cloud cover and maybe some of this drizzle as well. Temperatures right now sitting at 50 degrees. That number has not moved at all. Dew point is at 47. Westerly winds currently at about 7. And our forecast, uh, we'll call it mostly cloudy. It may still be cloudy at 2 o'clock, but uh, hopefully some breaks in the clouds by 4 p.m. 56, 50 by 6 p.m. We drop down into the 40s tonight, and uh, we'll see low 40s by tomorrow morning. Guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. An effort to honor a fallen star proving to be a success. Animal shelters and charities across the country have seen an influx in donations thanks to the Betty White Challenge. What the donations mean to those organizations. And the last two weekends featured two different box office champions. And the same two movies squared off again for this weekend's title, which came out on top, coming up. And a donate donut chain offering incentives for potential blood donors. What they're offering folks who roll up their sleeves to help save lives. A restaurant offering free donuts, hoping to encourage people to donate blood. This comes as the U.S. faces its worst blood shortage in over a decade. So to get a free dozen, customers have to order in person at Krispy Kreme and show their donation sticker. They can also confirm their donation on the Red Cross Blood Donor app. Since March of 2020, the Red Cross says it has seen a 10% drop in donations. Factors include canceled blood drives, staffing limitations, weather-related closures, and of course the surge in COVID-19 cases. And if you want to donate, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, always taking appointments, just scan the QR code right there on your screen for more information on how you can help. And the Betty White Challenge is a movement started by fans to honor her legacy and help animals in need like she always did. It encourages people to donate to their local animal shelters, and those contributions have been pouring in from all over the world. From Colorado, where the Foothills Animal Shelter received almost $30,000, to Indiana, where more than 1,000 donors helped raise money for food, medicine, training at the Humane Society of Hamilton County. I've never seen anything like this. It was remarkable to see. For this to turn into a life-saving opportunity for these animals was completely unexpected. Betty would be proud. Last week, the San Antonio Humane Society and the Animal Defense League of Texas both told KSAT they'd seen spikes in donations connected to the Betty White Challenge. Both organizations say they've received thousands of dollars in donations. Outside with live cam, apparently the rain left, but the clouds decided they're going to stick around for lunch. Yeah, they have. It's just kind of one of those January gray days, but I do think we'll get some sun. It's just going to take a little while longer. Uh, 53 was the high so far today. That was actually just after midnight. The low is our current reading, 50 degrees. Averages are 64 and 41. We'll probably stay below average when it comes to that high temperature today. And the records are 85 and 15. A couple more fronts in the forecast. We'll tell you what that means for your temperature forecast coming up. I guess if you're going to have a day like today, might as well be on a Monday. Yeah, it's a very Monday weather day. It is. But you know what, Justin, I feel like the rain's clearing out. You said it's just a little bit still on, on the east side of town. Yes, uh, the rain's clearing out, still some drizzle, still cloud cover. The sun is trying to reappear across uh, some of our counties, so that will 
help you get rid of that case of the Mondays, if that's what you're <laughs> dealing with today. Uh, let's look at the radar. Uh, so we do notice there still is some drizzle in and around San Antonio, some very light returns. The, the, the bulk of the rain, though, has moved east towards Houston, down towards Port Lavaca and Corpus Christi this afternoon. Uh, a little closer look here at San Antonio. There's still, yeah, some light returns, but I, I think that uh, as we get later into today, we'll see less and less of that. Uh, a little closer look at some of our eastern counties. Victoria, rain's actually moving out there. Howitzville, same story. So the rain, for the most part, is moving out. I wish we could have got some better rainfall totals out of this. Just wasn't there. It's not going to really help our drought situation much. Uh, we needed a lot more than what we got. Take a look at the time lapse. And you can see the clouds kind of lowering here as we got later into the morning. And now towards noontime, a few drops there on the camera. 50 degrees at the airport. Westerly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Dew point is at 47. And as we look at the uh, satellite picture here, there is the clearing line halfway through Bandera County. It's through most of Uvalde County, trying to work into Medina County now. So as you might imagine, just based on the speed here, it's going to take another couple of hours before it works its way towards San Antonio. Uh, but the sun is out in Uvalde, and that's pushed temperatures up to 54, 58 in a sunny Del Rio. Underneath the thicker clouds, though, we're stuck at 50 here. I mean, it's a very common number. San Antonio, Austin, Gonzalez, Kennedy, 52 LaGrange, 49 in Victoria, 47 up there in Fredericksburg. Here's what the future cast looks like. It, it shows the clouds moving out at about three or four. I think that's probably about right. And then by tonight, we clear out some and uh, that will allow temperatures to fall, but it will also allow the temperature to fall close to the dew point. And I think that allows fog to form. So by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, we'll get some fog, especially south and east of San Antonio, but it could affect the morning commute uh, for a time tomorrow before the sun pops back out. Forecast for today, we'll take it up to about 56 once the clouds clear some, 50 by 6 p.m. down into the 40s tonight, as we mentioned. Uh, let's talk dew points now. They're not terribly high, but uh, they're not going to really get any higher from where they are today because we continue to get these fronts, and these fronts don't bring us any rain. They just bring us drier air and breezy winds. Uh, and so we'll continue to see uh, the air kind of dry out here, especially as we get into the weekend. Here's the big picture. You see all the rain out ahead of the storm system. This is good rain for parts of East Texas. It's not just us that needs rain. Most of the state is dealing with drought conditions at this point. And that storm system will continue to push east. You can see it here in water vapor, that drier air just off to our west, that drier air indicated by the reds and oranges there. Our forecast, seven day forecast, 65 tomorrow after that morning fog and cloud cover, uh, 54 on Wednesday. We'll call it mostly cloudy. There are going to be quite a few clouds around Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. In fact, cloudy skies, 57. Another weak front comes through. That may be enough to stir up a shower Thursday night into Friday, but I'm a little skeptical. There's not a whole lot there. 55 Friday and then by the weekend up to 62 on Saturday. Keep in mind, we will get down close to freezing Saturday morning, 63 Sunday and past that. Maybe another chance of rain by early next week. We'll be right back. All right, I've got your weekend box office for you. Spider-Man No Way Home found its way back to the top. The film earned $14.1 million for a domestic total of $721 million. Scream dropped nearly 60% in its sophomore weekend, falling to second place with $12.4 million. Sing 2 made $5.7 million for third place in a domestic total of $128 million. The Western romance Redeeming Love, based on the best-selling novel, debuted fourth with $3.7 million. And The King's Man stayed in fifth place, taking in $1.8 million. All right, let's go downtown to our own movie stars, Mike. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet of you. You know, with Valentine's Day coming up, you know, yeah, yep. why not be sweet, okay? But it is cold outside, so maybe you want some fun ideas to kind of keep the kids busy on these winter days. Yeah, and nothing that gets plugged in, and Christy Cuthbert is here, our favorite mom of four boys. What's going on? Well, we're deep in the heart of Texas, y'all, so let's do some indoor target practice to keep Yay. our kids occupied. Okay. okay, so, and, oh, hey! What? How many points did you get for that? <laughs> Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So just oh, this is fun. Heart shaped okay. balloons. With and we have got some s'mores that we're going to be making. And how about sumo wrestling? She's got a great idea for that. All right, that's for the mm -hmm. kids, but how about. 
just for the romance yes. and the two of you. Mm -hmm. Well, Sweet little... Made Cakes is here to show us some romantic treats for your Valentine's Day plans. How gorgeous is mm -hmm. that? And get ready because yes. it is the second annual SA Live Pie Competition, and we've got a surprise all star competitor joining the challenge this year. I have to say, I won last year. Oh, did not, you? Not that I'm bragging. <laughs> and I'm going to see if they can, uh, you know, knock me off the pedestal or off the pie plate, I should say. So, and we are going to talk with some of the uh, couple of the voice actors from American Dad. It is a great cartoon. It has been around for How going on seasons? 17, 17 seasons, seasons? Yeah. and they've renewed it for even more seasons after that. Oh, yeah. all right. So all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.